I make you my Lord and Savior. Receive Christ. Receive Jesus. Accept Jesus. Accept Jesus. Accepting Jesus was easy. We evangelicals, somewhere along the line, made a decision to stop using biblical language when it comes to salvation instructions. And we have concocted all sorts of phraseology, all sorts of other ways to describe repentance and faith. If ever a soul is to get to heaven, the two wings that get him there are repentance and faith. When we use language that doesn't even include the words repentance and faith, I fear this is one of the reasons that we have created so many false converts. Are you a rotten fish? A little booklet I wrote, available at wretched.org, tackles the subject of salvation instructions, the false messages that we have unwittingly and certainly not maliciously been sending to people, which might explain why you actually know or even are a false convert. Here are wrong salvation instructions. Accept Jesus. And I accept you. I accept your gift of salvation. How do you accept Jesus into your heart? What does that even mean? What I'm told is I can simply say, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and all of a sudden I'm in and we're all good. Whether or not I stole a candy bar or a life, I have a little problem with that. Accept Jesus is used oh so often these days, and it indicates that we human beings are the one in the salvation driver's seat. I accept Jesus. Whoa. A.W. Tozer from, what, 60, 70 years ago, he was concerned about this very same issue that we're not using salvation instructions that are biblical or clear. And so he warned us decades ago, um, we got to clean up this lingo. Here's what Mr. Tozer said. Hell-deserving sinners are coming in droves to accept Christ for what they can get out of him. And though one now and again may a drop a tear as proof of his sincerity, it is hard to escape the conclusion that most of them are stooping to patronize the Lord of glory, much as a young couple might fawn on a rich old uncle in order to be mentioned in his will later on. A.W. Tozer understood the confusion that is created when we do not use correct in salvation instructions, but instead use lingo like this one, number two, Make Jesus your Lord and Savior. I make you my Lord and Savior. You are now my Lord and my Savior. From Are You a Rotten Fish, Friel wrote, Jesus isn't in heaven biting his nails, longing for someone to make him Lord. He is the Lord, seated on his throne, and he commands everyone everywhere to repent. Jesus doesn't need to be made Lord and Savior. He is. We need to surrender to him in repentance and faith. Did you notice something else that is lacking from accept Jesus or make Jesus your Lord and Savior? Two words. Where's repentance? Where is the doctrine of faith? Repentance is a turning from and faith is a turning to. Repentance toward God, repentance away from dead works and self-love, self-serving, trusting in other things, and repentance toward our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, that's what you're embracing and and beginning to hope in and trust in. Are we saved by anything else other than faith? Absolutely not. It is faith alone. Perhaps you accepted Jesus. Does that mean that you're not saved? No, it, it doesn't. You may have been repenting and putting your trust in Jesus Christ, and you were just given cloudy instructions, but it doesn't demand that we conclude everybody's a false convert who have accepted Jesus. But having said that, why would we want to risk it? More wrong salvation instructions. Make a decision for Jesus. From the booklet, Are You a Rotten Fish? If you're Eggs were caught in a bear trap. Would you decide to call 911? Yes. But if you don't call them, they won't rescue you. The same thing is true with Jesus. Mere mental assent does not save anyone. We must call out to the Lord 
in faith, and he rescues us. Decisional regeneration. It's been all the rage for about 170 years. Back in the 19th century, an individual named Charles Finney, who was a circuit preacher, would travel around the states, and he would try to persuade people to start acting more godly. Now, please note, he really wasn't all that concerned about genuine conversion and actual regeneration. He was just trying to help people clean up the outside of the cup. That is why he would encourage people to make a decision for Jesus. Decide this is a better way to live. Now, we've taken that concept and we've really embellished it over the decades to turn decisional regeneration into something as simple as, look, it's your decision, your call. You want to go to heaven? Just Make a decision. You gotta make a decision in your heart. Is that how somebody gets saved? Please note, a decision must be rendered. An individual must hear the law of the gospel and conclude, I've had this all wrong. (laughs) I want Jesus. That's a decision. Whether they are cognitive of that or not, they're making a decision. I no longer want this. I want that. But that decision does not get them saved. Let me just tell you guys, you don't make a decision for Christ. That is bad thinking. What you do is you die to the idea that anything but total surrender to him is a good idea. The number four wrong salvation instruction is say yes to Jesus. Say yes to God. Say yes to Jesus. Saying yes to God. Does God have your yes? Free Elias wrote, If you merely say yes to a police officer who commands you to stop, you're in big trouble. Ditto with Jesus. Judgment day is coming, and God's terms of peace are repentance and faith, not paying mere lip service. There are countless gospel presentations that conclude with statements like, say yes to Jesus. Now, to be clear, we do need to do that, but that really is about repentance. I need to agree with God, but that is not the totality of repentance. And saying yes to Jesus falls woefully short of that understanding. We must, yes, agree with God. Yes, you are right. Yes, I am a sinner. Yes, I should be damned for eternity. Yes, your son died for me while I was yet sinning. Yes, I want you and not that. But that is not the totality of repentance. Imagine this, you and I are in Omaha, Nebraska, and we agree to travel to the Gulf of Mexico to hang at the beach. I say, I'll drive. We hop into my car, and eight hours later, you notice the temperature outside is getting colder, not warmer. You don't see desert cacti, but you see pine trees. Then further down the road, you see snow on the ground and a sign that reads, Canada, 50 miles. You know I'm going in the wrong direction. What do you want me to do? Number one, you want me to agree with you that we're going the wrong way. Number two, you want me to stop. Number three, you want me to turn around. Number four, you want me to start going in the right direction. And five, you want me to keep going until we arrive at our correct destination. And that is biblical repentance. Then one must apologize, turn from their sins, commit to not doing it again, and then start moving in the right direction. That is repentance. Saying yes to Jesus doesn't quite capture that, does it? Try Jesus from Are You a Rotten Fish? Jesus is not a used car. Hoping someone will take him for a test drive. Jesus Christ is the sovereign king who commands us to humbly bow before him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Perhaps you'll recall a number of years ago on a very popular conservative news channel, a very high-profile evangelical was asked by the host, if somebody wants to go to heaven, how do they get there? And his response was, try Jesus. This is the perfect time to open their life to give it a chance. I'd say, give them a 60-day trial. Whoa, how deficient is that? Another wrong salvation in Instruction, commit to Jesus. Total and complete commitment to Jesus. You must commit completely 
to King Jesus. We are not commanded to commit to Jesus. We are commanded to repent and trust in him. And then he commits to us. And that is a far more secure relationship. You can lose your grip on Jesus, but he will never let go of you. When an individual understands their sinful state before God and that they rightly deserve his temporal and eternal punishment, but then they look on the cruel cross and conclude, that is my Savior, that's my God who died for me. I'm done with my old way of living. I'm putting my faith in you. Great news. Jesus commits to you. Commitment doesn't save. Now, to be fair, it has an element of repentance, but it's just that. It's it's an element. It's not the totality of repentance. Committing to Jesus, yes, that is what we should be doing as we put our faith in Jesus Christ. But once again, this evangelical command, it lacks two words, repentance and faith. More wrong salvation instructions. Oh, the sinner's prayer. Pray this prayer with me right now. And I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Friend, if you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. Oh, for real, you're in trouble. This is not to say that nobody who has uttered a sinner's prayer has ever been saved, but this is to say that God doesn't want someone to act like a ventriloquist dummy in order to go to heaven. That's not what he's seeking. He desires a broken heart and a contrite spirit, one who turns from their sins of their own volition and doesn't just utter statements that are made by other people without understanding them. Again, can people be saved from the sinner's prayer? Yes, but it is it the ideal way to tell somebody to repent and trust. If you think we save people, you'll go ahead and pray the sinner's prayer without any concern. But if you really fear God and realize salvation's of the Lord, you'll let God save people and not do something that's just mere man's tradition just believe? Well, that lacks repentance. Ask Jesus into your heart. You've got a God-shaped hole in your heart. Not sure why we've chosen that particular organ to be a part of salvation. Perhaps it's because it's true. Jesus does come and dwell within the heart. It sounds like you got a God-shaped hole in your heart. But the question is, how does he get in there? Salvation is not about asking Jesus to come into your heart. Salvation is about trusting in Jesus as your Savior, receiving the forgiveness he offers by grace through faith. Repentance and faith. Perhaps you have responded wrongly because you were given wrong salvation instructions. Might I encourage you, if that describes you, salvation is available and holiness will increase in your life. If this day you will repent and trust Jesus. Detective Friel, can you tell us what's happening here? Um, yeah, what's happening here is a clear demonstration of the noetic effect of the fall, Genesis 2. Paul elaborates in Romans chapter 3. Jeremiah tells us that everybody's heart is deceitful and wicked. Four words, great white throne judgment. Judgment. 